behalf of the people and government of Kenya, I want to thank you. And it is my hope that I will have another opportunity to host you, Mr. President, and my dear brother, His Excellency Isaiah Safarwarki, uh, to this home, Kenya, again and soon. I know you call this place your home. Mm -hmm. Kindly convey my warmest regards on behalf of the people of Kenya to our brothers and sisters in the great country of Eritrea. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, I would uh, start by saying again, congratulate you for your presidency, number one. I congratulate you for this initiative you took to visit Asmara and inspire everybody, including myself, to face the challenge. And as the saying goes, don't add anything to a wise person's comments or <laughs> comments. What you have said, what you have mentioned is a joint statement for Eritrea and Kenya and beyond. So thank you for that again. You are inspiring millions across the region in Kenya, Eritrea, Somalia, Ethiopia, Sudan, South Sudan, Djibouti, everywhere else and of course the, the continent. So, for that, again, I would like to sincerely thank you for this achievement. This is a milestone. This is a serious time where we, as I indicated to you while we were joking, we need to work 48 hours a day. There are 48 hours per day. We'll have to recoup our lost opportunity and work better in a very refined manner so that we can move faster and achieve what we have lost the last two decades and maybe more. Once again, I think this joint statement you have made is enough to explain what we are all about. One very significant thing this morning, you talked about IGAD, your uh, suggestion that we need to reconsider uh, our membership to IGAD. I readily say no question about that. We're rejoining or coming back again in IGAD with the idea of revitalizing this regional uh, integration company, uh, the organization so that any meaningful bilateral cooperation between Kenya and Eritrea will have to be seen within the context of the, of the, of the integrated region. We cannot achieve bilateral goals without the broader integrated region that we have dreamt to create decades ago. This is no new invention, it's not reinvention, we are not reinventing anything. This is an obligation. In the name of the peoples of the whole uh, region, we have to assume responsibility and revitalizing EGAD so that we can have a functional, real organization for the region is critical. Without that mechanism, ideals, goodwill will not be productive. We'll have to create an, an institution that is functional and result-oriented so that we can say we have changed uh, the face of, of, of the region. I don't know where uh, I can stop, but I will have to stop here and say your statement is a joint statement for everybody else. I would like to thank your team, our team, and the invited guests who come to listen to this. We would like to prove to you, to everybody else in the region, that this time is completely different. We're working together, we'll achieve our goals, we'll create the necessary mechanisms for implementing goals, we'll have to mobilize resources so that we can be enabled to do what we need to do as an obligation for the peoples of the, of the whole region. Once again, Mr. President, keep it up. Continue in Kenya and outside Kenya. Kenya is my second home, or my first home, your home, your second home is Eritrea and everywhere else in the country. All the best of wishes for the people of the region and good luck to Kenya and the people here in this country. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, uh, we have uh, members of the local and international media. We are going to take about three questions. Uh, three questions and kindly when you ask your question, direct it to either of the Excellencies or both if you want and say the media house you represent. Thank you.
Thank you, Excellencies. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Gunza from BBC Africa. Uh, my question is to both of you, Excellencies, regarding particularly Ethiopia. Both of the countries are heavily invested in uh, the uh, peace and security in Ethiopia and also in the region. And part of the agreement that the country had made was for the withdrawal of the uh, Eritrean troops uh, in uh, Ethiopia, in Tigray region. Uh, have you discussed this and uh, how do you think about this in terms of taking forward the peace process? Sorry, so, sorry, Excellencies, we'll take them in succession, please. I've gotten the... You repeat what, what I said. But... Can, you, can you repeat your question again? We did. I think the mic had a challenge at some point. I just wanted to find out if you had further discussions regarding uh, the uh, peace process in Ethiopia. Uh, part of it was the uh, withdrawal, complete withdrawal of Eritrean troops in Tigray region, and how you see this as uh, uh, taking forward uh, that peace process. I wish uh, there was a representative from the Ethiopian government here to address this uh, issue. <laughs> because I, 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 I have no intention of interfering in this matter, in spite of the disinformation campaign going on, trying to disrupt the process of peace in Ethiopia and trying to create a conflict between Eritrea and Ethiopia, which has been the norm for those who come to promote their agendas in the region, we say enough is enough. Ethiopia will have to enjoy peace. The people in Ethiopia will have to enjoy peace. What happened in Pretoria and Nairobi is a continuation of the aspiration and wish of the peoples in Ethiopia and everywhere in the region. And Eritrea has no agenda, no plan of uh, getting involved in this matter without the permission of the sovereign Ethiopian government. You talk about the withdrawal or no withdrawal, we've said this is nonsense. Don't provoke us to come to uh, a misunderstanding on this. Why are you bothered about Eritrean troops who are there or not there, come out and not come out? Let's assume that the peace process in Ethiopia is going without any obstacles. We would like to see the agreements signed in Pretoria or Nairobi implemented on the ground so that we can secure peace and stability in Ethiopia for the benefit not only of Ethiopia but the whole region. I think as uh, the President has, has told you, uh, that is a matter that is clearly and squarely uh, going on on the ground. I think we made huge progress, tremendous progress in implementing the peace uh, agreement that was signed uh, both in uh, Pretoria and Nairobi and uh, all governments including uh, Kenya, which is a, a stakeholder in some way. All governments are satisfied with the implementation process of what is going on in Tigray. And therefore, I think it is a major milestone in the region providing a solution for challenges facing our region. The original agreement between Eritrea and, uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia was groundbreaking. This is something that was outstanding for many years. The fact that that was concluded peacefully in a progressive manner, and the fact that we are also making huge progress in ensuring that Tigray is safe and secure in accordance with the agreement that was signed is also testimony that the region is taking full charge of issues that affect our region. One thing probably I may add and say, if you don't want this Pretoria and Nairobi agreement to be implemented, don't make a pretext of Eritrean presence or non-presence. This has nothing to do with the implementation of this arrangement, and don't look for excuses, don't look for pretext. That's not available now. Full stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two more questions. Um, thank you so much, Your Excellencies. Um, I have a question for Isaiah Zahwerki, His Excellency Isaiah Zahwerki. Um, still on Eritrea and um, Ethiopia. Louder, louder, louder. We can't um, hear you. Okay, cool. Uh, my name is Raya Lombor. I'm with the Washington Post here in Nairobi. So um, what is Eritrea's, Eritrea's response to um, we the cannot, repeated... We, we cannot hear you. Can you raise your voice? Like this? Okay, yeah. cool. So what is Eritrea's response to um, repeated overwhelming documentation of uh, war crimes by um, Eritrean troops in Tigray? And 
why did he deny its presence uh, there for five months um, after the troops entered? Um, my second question is, um, how many Eritrean troops um, have been killed in Tigray? And my third question to you is, um, do you have a plan for transition of power or elections in your country? Thank you. <laughs> One question at a time. I will answer the first question. And uh, don't take Eritrea as a pretext for problems in Ethiopia or elsewhere in the whole region. First and foremost, I would like to repeat this again and again and say, why is it an excuse for anyone, Washington Post or anybody else, as far as Ethiopia is concerned? This agreement is signed. It will take time to be implemented on the ground. And it's up to the government of Ethiopia to decide on the mechanisms and processes of implementing this arrangement. Don't try to drag us into a situation. But again, this question will have to go to a factory. A factory I call fabricating lies and disinformation. And go ask that factory or the owner of that factory who is talking about human rights abuse, who is talking about so many things happening on the ground. It's a fantasy, a fantasy of those who want to derail any peace process, achieving its goal. If you are interested, I say you're wasting your time. Everybody talking about human rights, violations here, the rape, looting. This is a fantasy in the minds of those who are owning this factory I call a factory of fabricating misinformation. Hi, thank you. Um, Kara Anna with the Associated Press. I would like to follow up on a couple of my colleagues' questions. How many Eritreans were killed in the conflict in Tigray? And also, what kind of succession plan do you have? Are you indeed president for life? And if so, what happens afterwards? Thank you. <laughs> Same question. It's, all, it, it, it's intoxicating you. These lies and fabrications are keeping your mindset in the wrong direction. I say correct that so that you can ask the right question at the right time. <laughs>